Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this we did on Patreon. It was a Patreon exclusive. Yes, it was over an hour long. Uh, easily could have done another you know, hour or two, really. <laughs> but it was a critical timeline info exclusive in which we're recapping so much. And there's new information, too, uh, that we've added to the mix about what's right ahead and what we see going far into the future as well uh, information that we've gotten so again we invite everybody to join us on patreon just a dollar a month who supports the channel and also exclusive videos several times a week so let's start here you see there was a 6.4 in the vanuatu region but the thing that really uh struck me more than this one and this by the way um no loss of life or anything as you can see it's out in the ocean was a 5.7 on the other side of the Pacific Plate. Over here in the Cascadian area, and here we have a 5.7, 10 kilometers deep, 178 kilometers west-southwest of Port Orford, Oregon. Yeah, we, and we, we are definitely keeping a very, very close eye on Cascadia, San Andreas, and the New Madrid with the closing in of the uh, eclipse and all that it feels like it's bringing. Well, I, I know. I mean, <clears throat> the last eclipse in 2017, I found out not just myself, but other people, their whole bodies trembled when, when that happened. And a lot of weird things <laughs> happened. So this one is like eclipse times on steroids. So yeah, I think there's going to be some changes definitely going to be changes with consciousness so you guys i keep telling you drink your water be hydrated be emotionally grounded and ready for that eclipse you know one thing i've touched on before which i just have to note is over here uh this is very close to fort jackson this is close to the little town of elgin and you know again i used to live right here right here and you know fort jackson huge military base more people go through basic training there than anywhere in the u.s and that's where my dad actually went through it way way back when 2.2 kilometers deep that's shallow and you know we have picked up before that it feels like it's an expansion of the deep underground military base uh structure that's underway but the other thing to note too is um, I, I do think at, that when we have the big ones going, Cascadia, San Andreas, New Madrid, I do expect you're also going to see it in Charleston. Uh, Charleston, the, the area over here, is capable of producing uh, an earthquake over 7. And in fact, it, what was it, 1880-something? 1888, uh, I think it was. It, 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 there is exactly that that caused liquefaction of the ground. So it's something to keep in mind. Oh, goody. Yeah. Uh, the ever popular <laughs> liquefaction of the ground under your feet. <laughs> Not anything we really want to have happen. But just be aware, these are the times that we're in. Evacuations underway due to massive fuel and and a fuel fire this is in bowling green kentucky uh what can you say it's, it's a gas station boom up in flames explosion was felt miles away unknown if anybody was injured as you can see it we've seen quite a few of those quite a few of those then also there was a curious uh fire going on under a bridge in ohio and this is the Valley View Bridge in Cleveland, Ohio. Massive fire underneath this. Huge pile of mulch. <laughs> That's several stories high, caught fire. Hmm, interesting, interesting. This was at the, about the same time as the bridge collapse in Baltimore. You know, the sleeper cells absolutely will be activated in mass, and we will know when that hits because it'll be just crazy. Talk about crazy. This is a scene in an airport. This is in France. And this is again relating to that migrant issue. You know, when was the last time you saw this in an airport? Hopefully not not in your lifetime, not in my lifetime. 
as the migrants attack staff at airport in protest of an illegal migrant getting deported. You know, the system is behind all this. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's all being funded uh, through the U.N., and in reality, the wars that we see in so many different places and the ones that we never even really hear mentioned, quote-unquote policing actions, etc., they all create these horrible economic and living conditions where people are desperate enough that if somebody dangles a carrot in front of their face, okay, we'll pack up and go elsewhere because things haven't been too good here. And you have this huge round robin going on globally. This is globally. This is huge. Another innocent American victimized by the crime wave. This is another illegal Alabama. Unfortunately, it's it's just atrocious what we're seeing. It, but I think obviously it's going to get um, worse when the stuff really hits the fan. Irish party politician. Roderick O'Gorman is going to use Irish taxpayer money on new land, property, and conversion of existing office space to accommodate illegal migrants. You know, again, this is not just in the U.S. This is all over. You know, and even Russia has a problem with this and some other locations as well. They are shuffling up. They're doing what, what Cindy says. You know, usually the red ants and the black ants, they're going to get along just fine. But somebody grabs the ant farm, shakes it up, and oh, oh my, watch out. Well, they're, of course, they're going to attack each other and in some cases kill each other because they think that they're the ones being attacked. And yeah, this is, this is not good. And we were listening to someone earlier who explains a little more detail. Um, it was in Arizona, I think. Well, funds are becoming uh, very, very limited and soon to be extinct to be taking care of other people. And um, that's that's not good. And if it's happening there, it's probably going to ha be happening everywhere. And there's going to be a lot of animosity. And, you know, there's a lot of people that we don't know and, and they don't know us. And there's going to be all kinds of confusion. Um, and I just think it's going to be a little bit bad in the cities where all this is going on, which is everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, and also obviously close to the border. This this is Stockholm, Sweden. Yeah, Sweden has had this this issue ongoing, ever getting worse. And there's migrant camps out outside in the woods, in the parks, on the streets. It's so sad. All the money that the system puts into just death and destruction, none of this has to be. And it's just waiting for the world to have that aha. Aha! Uh -huh, moment, and and recognize the whole problem is every single piece of the political leadership, all of them, they all got to go. American families can barely afford rent and groceries, but you know again the left right divide, giving out free gift cards and and free money to illegal aliens, as New York City begins handing out prepaid debit cards to migrants. So, you know in fact I mean you could pack up and start heading somewhere else and you got a much better chance of getting uh, everything for free as long as it isn't your country mm -hmm. that's the reality it, why do they want to do this they want to stir the pot they want to keep us ungrounded they want to keep us unable to root unable to blossom unable to grow it's attacking our root chakra for those that understand the chakra system it, it couldn't be any clearer than that, it, you know, stability. And, and here you have Belgorod. Thank you. And this is in Russia, by the way. Massive Ukrainian strikes uh, hitting deep into Russia. The sirens are going to go off, so I won't play it. But uh, bigger attacks than what we've seen. They, they seem to be escalating. Where's it coming from? Well, obviously, it's it's coming from NATO. It's pretty obvious. I mean, it might even be getting shot by NATO at this point in time, literally by NATO forces, because they are hell-bent on starting WW3. Why? Because too much is being revealed. It's just too much being revealed. They need to get you to look somewhere else. They need to, again, get you to just think about your 
own life and being secure. And these are Russian citizens over in Belgorod, and they're, they're heading for air raids shelters. How long until we are in the U.S. and in, in Europe, in, in uh, the EU? It's not going to be long because, you know, this is going on all the time. This is going to create more and more Russian citizens getting behind the war effort instead of criticizing it. Of course, you know, we see people disappear all the time. There, there is no good governance on this planet. And over here, this is Stavropol region in Russia. Another gas pipeline uh, explosion going on. Sabotage is happening all over the place because the system is sabotaging us. The system needs to have us accept uh, whatever it is they want to call food. You know, that genetically modified, toxic, poisonous uh, loaded with plastics, loaded with you know all sorts of pesticides, and who knows what else, nano, nano. They want you depending on them. They want you to eventually, as we were saying, going into those cell cities. Difficult days ahead for Serbia, so says Vucic. This is the president. Well, it looks like there could be a new war breaking out in the Balkans, and Immediately, I say to Cindy, I say, boy, I wonder if Ellie got this one totally right. Well, it, I mean, it would be wonderful. I think it would be in a way, but I don't want to see anybody get hurt. No. And so what we're talking about is the prophecy of um, Alois Ermiler again, because you could tell we're very, very close to the start of this. And he said that it starts, it really starts in the Balkans. He says there is a, an, an assassination by what appears to be migrants taking out a high-level polit politician, and then immediately that's when the war starts. And so it feels like we're, again, probably a matter of uh, weeks away. Could be earlier, maybe a little bit later. But you could see everything coming together, unfortunately, so much. And so, you know, she's uh, just talking about his abilities yeah. because he takes it very seriously. And he is still watching from fourth density on the other side to see how all this is playing out. There's never been a war in history that we know of, should be added, where 80 percent of the country has been decimated, 100 percent of the population displaced, and 50 percent of the deaths, unfortunately, the little ones. And that's Gaza. And, and just think about this. 80 percent of the country is, is just like this. All the population has been pushed out. That's two million people. It is just beyond an atrocity. But if the history books are right, and if the Bible is right, this is what happened to the original inhabitants of Canaan when the Israelites came. They pushed them out. And yet again, it's, it's tribal, and it's pitting one tribe against the other. We have to recognize that and not allow ourselves to be pushed into these tribal uh, wars because that, that's what it is. And then you read in... Deuteronomy 32, 8, and Psalm 82, and you read also in the Enuma Elish and other sources as well of the fact that each tribe is divided uh, by a being that is not from earth and ruled by different beings, and they play with humanity like chess. Well, we talked a lot about that on the Patreon for sure. Yeah, and a lot more detail as well. So you have a Delta Airlines flight cut short after a panel behind the engine falls off, and then an Airbus A330 returned to Salt Lake City three hours after it was forced to turn around. You know, there there won't be anybody flying soon. And we also shared that over a year ago, uh, that in the future there won't, there won't be humans traveling by plane. Then you have perhaps the worst VP choice in history with RFK Jr. And if you just read through some of the comments, uh, there's just shock and dismay and disappointment like a level I, I don't think I've ever seen with a pick before. 
He picked Nicole Shanahan, who is the ex-wife of Google co-founder Sergey Brin, uh, a huge funder of left-wing Soros-backed DAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, this this is somebody so obviously in the power structure, even supposedly has had a romantic uh, interlude with Elon. You can't make this up. This is exactly what the the real power structure is. It's it's just the worst of the worst, and it is all about not who you, who you are as far as a person and your abilities. It's totally who do you know? What bloodlines do you come come from? Bloodlines are so very important, and you know, I mean, it's it's. It's not a shocker that this happens. It just stinks, you know, because sometimes you hope, well, maybe there is something different. You want to hold on to that hope. And I'm not saying that anyone lose hope, but this just stinks. And it just goes to show you that what they're doing, you know, here's here's another um, another shiny object. <laughs> you know, go look at this. It's horrible. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's totally exactly it, it really uh, for so many people that were truly trying to get behind somebody, you know, this just shows you that you, you, there's no real choice here, obviously. And, and it just reaffirms that the choices get rid of the system. That's the only choice. The system has to go. There, there's never going to be any hope in the system. And here you have the WF's main thinking uh, think man here, main speaker, Yaval Harari again. Human rights are just a fiction story. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a fiction story. Now, if I played this, I bet you anything, because this is what happens happened before several times when I played his, him speaking. Uh, it gets blocked in certain countries. And so, you know, it, it, it just is one of those things where they don't want his own words being heard. But I'll have the link for you guys again. He says, might be a very nice story. It might be a very attractive story. We want to believe it, but it's just a story. It's not a reality. It's the same thing in politics, too. States and nations are also just like human rights and like God and like heaven. They're all just stories, very powerful stories. Stories we might want to believe very much, but they're all just stories. Yeah. So, you know, again, that's the way the WF thinks. And here you have a little helper who's ready to help our animals, our pets, our, you know, they're our family, and uh, they're always out to help us. You know, they, they have our backs. Certainly the politicians don't. <laughs> I know, it's adorable kitty. Super sweet kitty. Trust your pets. Love on your pets. They are true. They're not going to lie to you. Hey, I made a rhyme. As always, guys, thanks for your support. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.